Hello, I am Flash Isaac. This is Flash Ninas. You are now watching 120 Days to Jam. This is a series containing 120 videos to prepare you for jam. Each episode of the series contains introduction, outline, detailed class, questions, and homework for you. The questions and homework are from the Flash Learners Jam application. Install Flash Learners Jam app today to access all the free features. Click activate and scroll to buy activation key to get access to the golden features. Don't be scared, the app is affordable. Do you have trust issues? Simply chat me directly on Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Telegram for installation and activation instruction. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to take off. In this episode, as well as episode 15, 16, 17, 18, and even 19, we shall be looking at indices, love reading, and swords. Indices, love reading, and swords are very important topics in mathematics because more than 90% of other mathematics topics they depend or they require your knowledge of indices, log reading and sorts. Your knowledge of indices, log reading and sort will either make or mar your mathematics career. The reason many persons have problems in mathematics is that they don't have the background or the foundation. What is the background? The background is number and numeration, approximation, percentage, business mathematics, indices, log reading, and sorts. I will do my best to make sure that you understand or you know what indices, log reading, and sorts are about. One thing you will notice is that I try to bring all of them together. That is how they are. Indices, logarithm, and sorts are related. You need to learn or practice them together to get the complete idea. Look at something. After solving a mathematics problem or a physics problem, variation question, integration question, or whatever, you arrive at an answer, square root of 200. Then you see options. A, 10 root 3. Option B, 10 root 2. Option C, 20 root 3. Option D, 20 root 2. They begin to wonder, what, what is 10 root 3? What is 10 root 2? Which of them is correct? Especially in the situation where you don't have scientific calculator. What do you do? That is where the knowledge of indices, logarithm, and sorts come to play. Sorts is, if you have the square root of A times B, this is the same thing as the square root of A times the square root of B. We can use this knowledge to get something useful. If the square root of A times B is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. A times B means A is a different number from B. So let's call A 20 and let's call B 5. If you have something like this, this is the same thing as the square root of 20 times the square root of 5 separately. With this idea, you look at 200. Wow, 200 is 100 times 2. So this is the same thing as the square root of 100 times 2. That is the square root of 200. We did not change anything. 100 times 2 is 200. Getting here, you will be so happy because the square root of A times B, the square root of 100 times 2 is equal to the square root of 100 times the square root of 2. What is the square root of 100? 10. So this is 10 times root 2. 10 times root 2 is 10 root 2. You simply say 
B is correct without the use of calculator or the use of tables. After solving, you got log 2 to base 2. But looking at the options, we are seeing option A, 1, B, 2, C, 3, D, 4. Sometimes you feel, ah, I saw wrong, Leo. What's happening? How do I get the answer? And the most painful thing is solving correctly and being unable to pick the uh, right option. From here, looking at the law of logarithm, you say when you have a logarithm to the same base, log of b to base b, its answer is 1, which means this, is, this and this are the same. If you have a logarithm, this and this are the same, then the answer is 1. If you have log 10, the answer is 1. Why? When you don't have base in log regime, we assume it to be base log 10 because that is the natural base. So log 10 to itself is equals 1. So then after solving, you arrive at this answer. Then looking at the options, you are seeing things like this. What do you do? From the law of indices, we have that if you have s raised to the power of 1 over 3, that is the same thing as cube root of s. Now, 2 raised to the power of 2 over 3 is the same thing as 2 raised to the power of 1 over 3 times 2. Yes, because 1 over 3 times 2 is 2 over 3. From here, when you compare with this, s is 2, 1 over 3, which means here we have cube root of 2. Here is cube root of 2, then raised to the power of 2. Cube root of 2 raised to the power of 2. If you have 2 raised to the power of 1 over 2, this is the same thing as square root of 2. If you have 2 raised to the power of 1 over 4, this is equals the fourth root of 2. If here is 3, here is 3. So indices and logarithm are very, very important and fundamental. So long as you are studying mathematics, you must know them. If you are a physics student, you must know them. If you are studying chemistry, you must know them. Even economics, because all these things, they come to play in any calculation subjects. Let's take a look at a beautiful relationship between indices and logarithm. This will make you happy. Yes, look at it. What is indices in the first place? Indices has to do with how many times a number is multiplied or it has to do with power, exponents. Anytime you are given the number with power, that indicates indices. If you have 2 raised to the power of 3, this is the same thing as 2 into 3 places, 2 times 2 times 2. And what is that? 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. This is 8. Logarithm simply means how many times one number is multiplied to get another. Take a look at something. Don't rush, don't rush. If I say log 8 to base 2 is equal to 3, do you know what this means? This implies that you need to multiply 2 3 times to get 8. Look at it. 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8. How many times? 1, 2, 3. So you multiply 2 3 times to get 8. Anytime you are given a log question, if I say this log this is equal to this, it means you have to multiply this, this number of times to get 8. And the relationship between indices and logarithm is that in indices, if you have a raised to the power of s is equal to y, example, let 2 be a, let 3 be s is equal to y, that is 8. 2 raised to the power of 3 is 8. In logarithm, log a raised to the power of y is equal to s. So, log what is a? 2. Log 2. Raised to the power of what is y? 8. 8. Is equals s. What is s? 3. 3. From this relationship, it means if I give you log 8 to base 2 is equals 3, it simply means 2 raised to the power of 3. If I say log 2, 4 is equals 2, this implies that 2 raised to the power of 2 is equals 4. Log 81 to base 3 is equals 4. This means that 3 raised to the power of 4 is equals 81. So that is the relationship between logarithm and indices. 
log 81 to base 3 is 4 it means 3 raised to the power of 4 is equals 81 that is how logarithm work now when you are given a question and they say log 8 raised to the power of 3 to base 2 is equals s find s it means that 2 raised to the power of s will give you 8 raised to the power of 3 it simply means that 2 raised to the power of s will give you 8 raised to the power of 3 is that 512 now from here means 2 raised to the power of s is equals 8 raised to the power of 3 it means 2 raised to the power of s is equals 512 once you have this do you know the next thing you will be doing go to uh, don't solve just go to the options option a let it s be 9 if s is 9 with 2 raised to the power of 9 give us 512 yes so s is equals 9 if this did not give us, we cancel it. The next option you say, with 2 to the power of 8, give us 512. If yes, you pick it. You see? So you'll be able to solve indices and logarithm questions without even solving actually. Now look at this. They say log s squared to base 3 is equals minus 8. Find s. This is the same thing as s squared is equals 3 raised to the power of minus 8. From indices, when you have negative power, for example, a raised to the power of minus 4, it is equals 1 over a raised to the power of 4. This is the same thing as s squared is equals 1 over 3 raised to the power of 8, where a is 3, minus 4 is minus 8. 1 over a, 3 raised to the power of 8. So this means any value you get here, when you square it, it should give you 1 over 3 raised to the power of 8. So this means s squared is equals 1 over 6, 5, 6, 1. You look at the options. Any of the option, you substitute the value of s and square to give you 1 over 6, 5, 6, 1 is the correct option. Here, log 280 to base 10 is equals s. It means that 10 raised to the power of s is equals 280. Then you press your calculator. Tell us the power of which of the options will give you 280. Anyone that gives you 280 or approximately 280 is the correct option. This is introduction to indices, logarithms, and source. We've not started. This is the a tip of the iceberg, a tip of the ice block. In the next episode, we shall be taking a look at the loss of indices, then the loss of logarithm, the loss of source. Then as we proceed, we solve questions we understand the beauty of it is that before we get to the 19th episode you will know and understand everything about indices logarithm and swords so that is it check your flashiness app and take a look at questions so as to solve them you'll be able to understand and follow that is it see you in the next episode